thank you so much for joining in with us uh, on this beautiful day that God has created for us. Uh, let me just begin by saying Happy Father's Day uh, to all the fathers that are joining in with us today. Uh, we recognize this is a, a tremendous day of celebration, a tremendous day of honor. Uh, and I pray that, uh, that you are greatly recognized for your faithfulness uh, to your family, your faithfulness uh, to the body of Christ. And I'd just like to take just a, a moment and give a special shout out to my father, who I, I personally feel is uh, maybe the greatest father uh, that's ever walked the face of the earth. And I, I, I realize I might be a little bit biased in that. I pray that you feel that way. Uh, about your father and I just encourage you to to take a moment give him a call give him a text uh, send him a note uh, and just uh, expressing your appreciation and to my dad once again I say happy Father's Day to you uh, and pray God's blessings over you and just believe that you have a, a, a marvelous uh, a wonderful day of, of celebration and and being honored for the, the great individual uh, that you are. And, and I just want to encourage each one of you, if you, as we remember that this is Father's Day, uh, we're going to continue in our series that we've entitled Just Be. Uh, if you remember with me, uh, just last week we, we talked about uh, Be the Church, and the week before that we talked about Be Encouraged. And today here on Father's Day, I've entitled the, the message Be the Man. Uh, and, and want to encourage you today to be the man that God has purposed and created uh, for you to be, just as I believe he's purposed and created for me to be. So if you have your Bibles, uh, if you'll open them up with me to Matthew chapter 1, I'm going to pick up in the 18th verse here in just a, a few moments. If you already recognize that scripture, uh, your thought might be, uh, hey, hey, Jerry, this isn't Christmas. And, and I realize it's not Christmas, but I, I think this is a wonderful passage for us to uh, to look to and we recognize we look to this passage many times when Christmas rolls around and uh, when we hear messages when we hear teaching uh, around the Christmas time in reference to this particular passage uh, many times the spotlight settles on baby Jesus or maybe his mother who we recognize was Mary or maybe the shepherds uh, for some, the, uh, the teaching is focused on, on the angels. Uh, for others, the teaching is focused on, 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 on the magi. But I recognize uh, very little do we hear a message about Joseph. And here on this wonderful Father's Day, I want to draw our attention to this great individual, this great father, who we recognize that his name was, was Joseph. And I, I tend to think in this little passage, we find the most that we, we, we ever discover about who Joseph is, what Joseph uh, set out to become, and what he was purposed uh, to become. And, and when we think about this for just a little bit, we recognize that the Roman Catholic Church has canonized Joseph. They refer to him or call him Saint Joseph. But we also recognize in the Protestant movement, uh, many have virtually ignored him, that being Joseph. And I believe that he deserves more. I would say that he deserves better. I, I, I tend to believe he had to be a remarkable man of God to be chosen from all men on the earth to serve as Jesus's earthly father. And so on this Father's Day, I, I want to give him honor and, and learn from him and trust that each one of us can, can learn just a little bit from the life of Joseph, how we can be the man that God has created and purposed for each one of us to be. And as I identify, we find this great recording here in the book of Matthew in regards to Joseph. And before I read it, let me identify just a few things that we, we know of him. Number one, that he was a descendant of David. So we recognize royal blood uh, coursed through his veins. He maintained a dignity and kindness that reflected his family heritage. He witnessed Jesus' birth. He saw the shepherds' adoration. He led Mary and the baby Jesus to Egypt to escape King Herod's slaughter of the infants. Joseph took Jesus to the temple at least twice that we find recorded in God's word. There, Then when he was an infant and then uh, years later when he was 12 years of age, uh, his father Joseph uh, took him uh, to, to the temple and, and he was subject to authority there. We recognize also that Joseph feared God and worked hard to support his family in a rustic town disdain for its 
obscurity. And then, as the gospel goes on, it appears as though Joseph disappeared. We don't find a, a lot historically, much more uh, about Joseph throughout the, the accounts within the gospel. Uh, there's questions as to what maybe happened to Joseph. Some believe maybe he died at a young age. Others just we don't, don't know. And uh, to be honest, we're, we're not really quite sure what exactly happened to Joseph. But we do recognize that Jesus, as the oldest son, assumed the responsibility of Joseph's carpenter shop and, and worked to help to support his family. He didn't stop working as the village carpenter until his younger brothers were old enough to take over the family business. And then we recognize that Jesus stepped into his earthly ministry. But I, I want to focus our attention once again back to Joseph. And I want to uh, bring to our attention three great things that we discover about Joseph. So let's look to scripture for just a moment here in Matthew uh, chapter 1. Pick up with me in the 18th verse as I read along today. It reads, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Continue with me in verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. A little bit longer, verse 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and he took Mary home as his wife. And I'll conclude here in verse 25. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Let's take a moment and pray over God's word and that God's, uh, God's good work would be accomplished in each one of us uh, today. Father, I say thank you for your word once again. Lord, thank you for this great scripture that we have to reflect upon. God, and we simply trust in your revelation, God, that your truth would take root in each one of us. God, and that, that, that we would be helped, God, that we would be encouraged on this wonderful day that we recognize as Father's Day uh, to be the man, Lord, to be the father that you have purposed for each one of us to be. God, and I pray that uh, th those around us, Lord, our, our wives, our children, that, that they would be encouraged, God, as we grow into that, that man that you have once again purposed for each one of us to be unto your glory. God, and we pray that, that your will is accomplished in these next few moments. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Once again, I just want to give you three things that we recognize uh, from the life of Joseph. And I want to jump right into this today. Number one, that Joseph was a just man. Look back to verse 19 with me one more time. It reads, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Uh, the King James identifies that he was a just man. Here in the NIV, which I just read, it identifies uh, Joseph as a righteous man. The Bible tells us, tells us with frankness intact of Jesus' conception by the Holy Spirit and recognizing that, that Joseph was a just man. I want to identify three areas that we can, we can capture this today. Number one, Joseph was sensitive to society's moral standards. He could not ignore what people would think and say. All his life, he had been abiding, abiding by, by such high standards. Apparently, Joseph had, had no dynamic, overwhelming personality, but we do recognize that Joseph was a good man with ordinary abilities, but he put those abilities that we would recognize as common and ordinary, he, he put those abilities 
in God's hands and God was willing to use him. And I, I want you to recognize just as God used Joseph, that God desires to use your life. And, and that we would become the men and that we would rightfully lead our families the way that God has purpose for us to lead our families and that we would lead our own life the way that God would purpose into the high standards that God has established for each one of us. So Joseph, we recognize, number one, was sensitive to society's moral standards. Number two, Joseph was sensitive to his own reputation. When people say, and sometimes we hear people say this, I don't care what people think as long as I think I'm right. I want you to realize that they're really only trying to fool themselves. Being right is important, but what others think of you, I believe, is just as important as far as it depends upon us wanting to live the life that we recognize is honorable, to live a life that we recognize uh, is respectful to others, but most importantly, respectful to God. Uh, we recognize, and you might recognize, we might truly be right, but if people think that we are wrong, we lose our opportunity to help them. A godly person's reputation is very important because we're called to encourage, we're called to strengthen, we're called to, to help those that are around us. And it's hard to help people if we don't have a good reputation. So we want to maintain a good reputation amongst those that we fellowship with. We want to maintain a good reputation with those within our community so that we can be that godly help that God has purposed for each one of us to be. Proverbs 22 verse 1 uh, puts it this way, A good name is more desirable than great riches. One more time, a, a good name is more desirable than great riches. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but more than gaining worldly wealth, I want to have a good reputation with those that I associate with, those that, that, I, that I, I work with within the community. Uh, and it helps me and it would help you if we maintain that good reputation in order to help those that need to be strengthened uh, in, in the godly the, the godly areas of our life. Lastly, number three, Joseph was sensitive to Mary's plight. Look, look with me now to verse 20. It says, but after he had considered this, that the possibility of divorcing, divorcing her, it says verse 20, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. We recognize in this moment he delayed any rash judgment and did not want to believe the worst. He kindly considered Mary's dilemma and was willing to divorce her privately. We recognize that in, in verse 19. If he recognized that would protect her from the cruel gaze of some hostile neighbors. His emotional balance in this crisis is amazing. He's, he's thinking of Mary, thinking of Mary's benefit and, and, and not wanting Mary to be shamed and, and, and initially thinks that this could be the right thing in order to help her out, to prevent her from being shamed in any way that she didn't deserve to be shamed. But not being willing to make a rash judgment uh, the Lord comes upon him, and in his dream, he, he receives this instruction, we would say, this inspiration, this revelation of life, and he realizes that what is conceived in Mary is that of the Holy Spirit. And in doing so, he realizes that it's right for him to stay with Mary, to, to help her, to encourage her, uh, to grow together, and to be the parents that God had purposed them to be for the baby to be born that we recognize would be Jesus. So number one, we recognize that Joseph was a just man. Joseph was sensitive to society's moral standards. Joseph was sensitive to his own reputation. And lastly, Joseph was sensitive to Mary's plight. Let me get you to my second thought that we gained from Joseph today. Joseph was sensitive 
to a heavenly vision or what we would classify as a dream. Like Paul there in Acts chapter 9 when he has that, that miraculous encounter with the Holy Spirit, the revelation from on high, Joseph was not disobedient to his vision from heaven. A supernatural birth required supernatural proof. And that's exactly what Joseph received right here in the 20th verse was a, a, a supernatural vision. We would recognize this as supernatural proof for what was fixing to take place, this supernatural birth conception of Jesus Christ. After his dream, he had no further doubts and unreservedly, the scripture declares, he accepted Mary to be his wife. They had faith in God and they also had faith in one another. I want to stop right here and, and, and share with you. I, I believe that God wants to give each one of us a supernatural vision, a supernatural dream. I, I believe it's good, it's profitable in living a life unto God and allowing our faith to, to grow in God. And, and Joseph right here had one of those marked moments. He had one of those divine moments of life where he, he's probably searching, trying to figure out what, what is the right thing. You and I experience that sometimes in, in being a father and being the man that God has purpose for each one of us to be. Sometimes we struggle as to what's the right decision for us or what's the right decision for our family. And I believe in that moment of, of seeking and searching after God that, that God can give you, just like God gave Joseph, like God gave Paul, a supernatural vision or a supernatural dream to provide proof into your life and also into my life that we're walking in the in the ways of God we're walking in the will of God that God has destined for each one of us so number two Joseph was sensitive to this holy vision and when he received it he knew that which was the right thing for him and that which was right for Mary and he was willing to walk faithfully in what God had purposed for their life. And that leads me to number three, that Joseph was a faithful father. He provided Jesus with a human example for his sublime teachings about God as, as our heavenly father. I, I remember reading of John Stuart Mill who testified that he could not pray the Lord's prayer because he had experienced brutal, unreasonable discipline by his calloused father. To think of God as a father like his father was uncomplimentary to God, uh, was the words, the testimony of John Stuart Mill. But Jesus seemed to warmly remember Joseph's generosity to his children. In Matthew 7, verse 11, Jesus says this, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? We, we recognize in this scripture that Jesus uh, didn't see His earthly father, Joseph, as a, a perfect father, but He recognized Him, I believe, as a faithful father who was generous uh, to Himself, that He was generous to His family, and He recognized that His Father provided well, provided good gifts to the family, but he also recognized the greatness of his heavenly father and, and realized that, that though my earthly father, Joseph, gave us a good provision, gave us good gifts, how much better are the gifts that come from our heavenly father? And, and though Joseph was a faithful father, how much more faithful is our heavenly father, God himself, to each one of us? But, but Jesus had that great model in Joseph the one who was that faithful father to him uh, through the early years of his life, leading him, directing him, teaching him, helping him throughout the, the journey of life, enabling him, just as well as his heavenly father, to become the man that God had purposed for him to become. So let me review this real quick before I get into the conclusion today. We recognize that Joseph was a just man. Number two, that, that Joseph was sensitive to his heavenly vision, the heavenly dream. Lastly, number three, that Joseph was a faithful father. And I want to begin to wrap all this together. If you still have your Bibles right there, turn with me to, to Luke chapter 15. In, in, in Luke chapter 15, we, we, we find this, this wonderful parable uh, referred to as the parable of the prodigal son, or another translation would say the, the parable of the lost son. 
But I want you to catch it from a different perspective today as I begin to conclude today's message. I, I believe this could also be referred to as the parable of the loving father. The parable of the loving father. And I'm not going to read all of this, but you, you might remember that, that, that one of the sons uh, asked his father for his inheritance, his portion of the family, and he wandered off, wandered away from the family. And the Bible declares that he wasted, he spoiled all of his inheritance. And he got to the point where he was just slopping around with the pigs. And he thought it would be better to be a servant in his father's house than, than to live in the slop with the pigs right here but I believe through that whole time that whole journey that the loving father was expecting and waiting for his son to come back home why because in this parable we recognize that the father was a loving father the best part of the story is I believe when the boy returns home from a faraway country we, we know that the father never ceased to watch for his son look look right into the middle of this in, in luke chapter 15 I, I want to catch up right in the middle of this story it says when he came to his senses verse 17 referring to the son he said how many of my father's hired men have food to spare and here i am starving to death i will sit out and go back to my father and say to him father i have sinned against heaven and against you verse 19 i i am no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired men so he got up and went to his father and catch this but while he was still a long way off his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him he ran to his son threw his arms around him and kissed him catch this the whole time the son was wandering in just the mess of this world, wasting everything. The father's waiting, the father's looking, the father is expecting for his son to come home. And when his father sees him, he's so overwhelmed, so overjoyed, so filled with compassion, the scripture declares that the father ran to the son and there he embraced him, took him in just as his very own his father once again never ceased to be watching for the son to come home and there in verse 20 we identify the father ran denote, denoting his his own eagerness for reconciliation he joyfully welcomed his son back home with a robe a ring the scripture declares shoes and a joyous feast we jump to the end of this the 32nd verse the father said to the other son your brother was lost and is now found jesus teaches us that that's what god is is really like there's many that have wandered away maybe you have wandered away from him but i want you to know that our heavenly father is a loving father who longs for your return i believe he's watching he's waiting and if we would just make that make that that turn back to him i, I believe god would run back to us and, and begin to embrace us why because god loves us so much he desires to forgive us to forgive you and to restore your place as a son or daughter if you will just return from your old life and look back to him again you know i think of it as being a father myself how, how joyous it is when my I, i'm blessed with two daughters when when they come back home from being gone on a trip or are gone visiting somebody and they they come back and and, and it's a joy to welcome them back into the home again and I, I i want you to realize that i believe that god is waiting for that moment to wrap his arms around us and to embrace us once again as a son or a daughter so i wonder as i conclude this right now would you be willing to turn back to jesus to turn back to god and to accept him as your heavenly father the savior of your life once again it doesn't matter what you've done Jesus went to the cross because he loves you and he wants to restore that relationship back with God our Heavenly Father could you make that choice to accept him and could I also encourage you to be that father to be the man 
that God has purposed and to be willing to wrap our arms around our own children and to be that loving father, that faithful father that God has purposed each one of us to be. Can I pray with you right now? Father, I say thank you. Lord, for this moment that we've been able to have together today, we trust in, the, in your revelation, God, your truth, God, that, that your word would be planted into each one of us, God, and that it's accomplishing that which you have purpose for it to accomplish. God, and I, I pray for each father right now. God, if, they, if they've wandered away from you, God, that they would return to you. And God, that, that each one of us would make that choice to be that man, to be that father that you've purposed for us to be. God, to be that just man, that righteous man. God, that faithful father, that loving father. God, that you have created each one of us. God, that you trust us. That's why you've blessed us with our children. You've trusted us to be that father. God, so I pray your blessing on each one of the fathers right now. God, your blessing of strength, your blessing of courage, your blessing of love. God, and that they would daily, God, grow in that responsibility of being the father that you have purposed each one of us to be. God, according to your will, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Once again, I trust God's blessings over you that you have a great celebration, a great Father's Day. Uh, and we look forward to getting back together again next week. Be blessed. I believe that you can pray with people and people can be raised back to spiritual life. I, I believe that you can pray with people and, and the lame would walk, the, the blind would see. I believe that you can pray with people and people would be spiritually delivered of whatever attack that they're experiencing within their life. Why? Because I believe in the gift of miracles. I desire to see the gift of miracles operates within the life of our church.